So the first thing we're going to want to do is get into our super user, user mod. We're going to add the super user group to our user. And his name is Debian. Let's exit out of this. We're going to exit again. And we should have access to this in groups. Um, you won't have access to it, actually, unless you log out. But because I've already done this, I have access to sudo. And next, what we're going to want to do is use sudo to give us the privilege of installing something called curl. And the next thing we want to do is we also want to install uh, gn upg. And this is a tool that's going to allow us to um, sign keys uh, for packages that we're going to want to install into our installation. And off screen, I'm just going to copy out a key for RVM, which we're going to be using. And off screen, I'm just going to copy out a curl command. RVM is a Ruby version management tool. So it allows us to have multiple instances of um, different versions of Ruby on our system. This is going to take just a minute to install. And you're going to want to run this command afterward. Depending on your system name, this might not be the same. So we'll let this finish. Okay, perfect. So now we could just paste in that command from before. I'm going to set our source, and now we can start using this tool. So we'll take a look at the version of this. I might have done that incorrectly, actually. Yes, okay. So we're running on RVM 129.10. So just in case, we don't actually have the most recent version, but, you know, in most cases we do. We're going to run this command here. We're going to get the stable. So it's the same. Great. Now what we're going to want to do is get into our super user. We're going to say su dash. I'm going to group add rvm. I'm going to user mod and add that group. Oops. Add that group rvm to oops to root. So from here, what we can do with RVM is we can actually install a version of Ruby, whichever kind of version we'd like, 2.6 or 2.4 or whatever. But what I'm going to do, because I know that this Debian machine comes with Ruby, I'm going to check my Ruby version, and I see that I'm running on 2.7. If you want to check your versions that you have of Ruby, you can type in RVM list, and that's going to give you um, the list of different Ruby versions that you have active on your machine, or installed on your machine, rather. And you can see that this is the current, and it's also the default uh, Ruby version that we're using. You can set your Ruby version by, your default Ruby version, by just typing in RVM and dash dash default space. You want to say use, and then use the Ruby version that you want to use. So in this case, I'm using 2.7.0, but this is not necessary because we see that we've already been designated um, our current and also our uh, default Ruby version. So now what we want to do is we want to install the gem Rails, and Rails is actually a gem. So we're going to say gem install Rails. Uh, this might take a while. So because we have access to Ruby, we have access to a command called gem, and this is what we're using to install the Rails gem into our system. It even tells you it's going to take a while, <laughs> and it does take a while. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and take a look at our Rails version. 
we see that we're running on 6.0.3.2. I'm going to take a look at my directory, I'm in the home directory, and for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to install a new Rails app in this directory. So this is going to go through and actually install a number of dependencies that Rails needs to run properly, including Bundler, which we're going to use to uh, bundle our packages into our Rails application. And normally at this point, it's this process that takes quite a while. Okay, so here it asks us to install Node.js, and you can visit this web link here at the bottom if you want to install it there, but I'm going to run a command. And this won't throw up a prompter asking me if I'm sure I want to install it. That's what the Y flag is for. So Node.js is kind of important for us um, for our asset pipeline. So let's take a look at our Node version. So off screen, I just copied out a command we're going to be using to get a key for our next installation, which is yarn. And here I'm going to run an update and apt install yarn. And this should go out and give me the newest version of yarn. So yarn is a package manager and it's faster than NPM, if you're familiar. Um, it has the same feature set as um, existing workflows while operating faster, more securely and more reliably. I'm just going to check my gem version quickly. 312. I'm going to update my gem. Okay, cool. We have a new version. 314. Okay, so from here what I want to do is I want to CD, change my directory, into my Rails um, application folder. And I'm going to try running Rails S, though I don't think it's going to work. It's going to ask us for Webpack, I think. Yes, it says that we need to install Webpacker. So let's go ahead and do that. So Webpack is going to go out and get some packages for us that we're going to need for our application. All right, now from here we can say Rails S to start our server. And this actually won't work for me. Uh, the reason why is because my network is kind of uh, unique. I have a unique installation. So what I'm going to do is show you another way to access the application. I'm going to say Rails S for Rails server. I'm going to set up my binding. Oops. Binding at 192.168.2.2.40. And the reason why I need to do this is because I, port 3000, I'm running a virtual machine. So now if I navigate to Chrome here, here we are. We're on Rails. 6.0.32 and we're using Ruby version 2.7.0. So let's have some fun. All right, so from here I'm going to generate a scaffold. Where I'm going to be calling my model the post. It's going to have a title and that title is going to be of a string value. And I'm going to have a description of a text value. And so the way this works is a string value is going to be limited to 255 characters, whereas a description will be limited to around 30,000. And typically your description will be larger than your title. So we're going to go ahead and commit that. And 
Okay, and from here I can migrate my changes into my database. So Rails, DB migrate. I don't need to take a look at this. I know it's going to be pretty solid. Great. We don't need to restart our server for this. Our server is still running in the background. So let's go back to Chrome and let's go to Posts. Here we are. So from here, I can create a new post. I can give it a title. Give it a description. Create. We can edit the post. And we see that our update action works our edit action works, and our create action works. Let's see if our destroy action works. We get a prompt, and there we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned on my YouTube channel where I touch on technical topics weekly.